Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us um, for a fabulous The Revolution of Microoptics Use Cases and Funding. And we are very happy that to co present along with Fabulous. In this event, you will learn about microoptics and funding opportunities. Fabulous has an open call, which means you submit, and if it passes, you can receive funding to explore the wonderful world of microoptics. So, Jessica, um, would you like to have anything to say before we add, uh, before Adrian gives our introduction? No, I would say, uh, yeah, thank you very much for hosting uh, this event, of course, today. And uh, I'm looking forward to a really nice event. I will talk a little bit more about uh, fabulous micro optics and funding also later on. So, thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, Audrey, uh, with, without any further waiting, I'd love, love to introduce uh, Dr. Adrian Malka. He is the managing director of Optic BB, and he will give us an introduction to Optic BB. Um, something to know about Optic BB is we are the voice of hidden champions. That whenever you are doing anything in the photonics realm, there is a significant probability that one of our entities that we work with or represent via Optic BB is involved. And on that note, Handing this off to you, Adrian. Yeah, thank you. So the first question, which is always appearing in online seminars, can you see my slide? Ah, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Okay, yes, okay. You can see it, okay, perfect. Thank you, thank you. So, um, a lot of words about Fabulous, not from me, from me, just a very brief introduction, who's Optic BB? The Optic BB is uh, one of the uh, co-organizers of this event, and it's also the uh, association of the optical technology in Berlin and Brandenburg. That's the name for. And yeah, Berlin Brandenburg. It's um, both. It's a city and an area. And uh, within the city, we have 4 million people. Within the land surrounding Berlin, we have uh, 2.5 million people. And both together, um, yeah, it's very different. But in optics, it's uh, very similar. We have a lot of um, members from all over this uh, country and the city. And not only from the well-known hotspot in Berlin, Adlershof, but also in Rathenau and LDS and, and so on. In all states, Berlin and Brandenburg, it's, it's uh, not different to other um, states. We have several problems or several action fields to solve um, within such an area where a lot of people live together. And here is the six main um, businesses which has to be solved. And for all these six big fields, there are clusters formed within Berlin and Brandenburg. And the special cluster in the middle, it's the photonics, the optics, optics and photonics, and also micro technology, which is a cross link technology. And as you can see, the, the turnover of all these clusters are quite huge um, instead of optics and photonics. But in all these fields, optic and photonics is inside. And so I have to just leave them in. Uh, the photonics uh, with this very, well, not very, with this uh, much smaller turnover creates also a huge amount of, of um, business in all these other fields. And the Optic BB is organized in six fields, and which are old. Okay, maybe there's someone, yeah, now it's muted. Uh, six old fields, and we just invented two new ones. Now we have eight technology action fields um, because we are 126 members in Optic BB right now. They are one of the biggest association photonics uh, on the planet. And it's not possible to visit all these members within a year. Um, I try to, but I don't get it. Um, so we organize action fields and they are mentioned here just in German. The English translation is on the homepage. I'm, I'm sorry about this. And uh, within these action fields, we organize um, 
nearly 40, 30 to 40 members in each of these action field and meet us um, four to eight times a year. And so we also have uh, the chance to have a close contact to the needs and the, uh, and, and the business of all our members uh, during the year. And this uh, event, fabulous, it's um, linked to the action field focus, photonics and quantum technology, uh, technology for communication and sensoring, and of course, microelectronics and micro uh, system technology, because with micro optics, we can put it directly on a wafer and we can integrate on a very, very high level for smallest sensors and uh, yeah, internet of things and something like this. And also we can set up uh, micro optics, which solve optical problems, which are not solvable with classical and technical optics. And so that's from me, just very brief introduction of Optic BB. And now I thank you for your attention and let you go inside the micro optics. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for the presentation. Sorry, Jessica, please take the helm. No, no. So, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I thought uh, I, uh, I also thank him <laughs> for giving a really nice introduction into Optic BB. It's really nice. Thank you. So, let's see, who do we have next, Jessica, on um, for our presentation? Yeah, so I will uh, uh, now be sharing the screen and then uh, explaining a little bit more about Fabulous and then explaining also a little bit about the speakers that will talk on some of the possibilities with micro optics. So let me share my screen. And then go into presentation modes. So it should be okay. You everyone should be able to see my screen. So, um, so yes, Fabulous is the pilot line for the manufacturing of freeform micro optics. And uh, so we are uh, actually uh, um, two parts. So we are a project in the Horizon 2020 program for the manufacturing of freeform uh, micro optics. And as part of that, uh, we wanted already to establish a, a legal entity which is the Fabulous Pilot Line Association. Uh, so I am running that. I am the front office. I'm the first contact for uh, customers. And uh, uh, the Fabulous project is coordinated by CSEM. Uh, it's what has enabled some of the use cases you will hear about today. And uh, um, of course, they are also uh, um, responsible for the funding, uh, which I will talk to a little bit after we hear from the use cases. But let's start a little bit about uh, the fabulous pilot line. So uh, our main goal is to unify the European research and technology organizations and the industrial partners to this pilot line for the manufacturing, design and manufacturing of freeform micro optics. Uh, so we, uh, I will explain also more about this, but so the idea is that uh, we uh, provide access uh, as a single entry point to our services and to represent the interests of the micro optics community in general. Uh, so, um, the pilot line for design and manufacturing. So these are the project uh, partners, the partners in the project uh, that are, um, uh, are offering uh, services or are supporting. And um, so you see here that we have CCM, uh, they are doing uh, the, they, they are the, they are an RTO connected to Swiss Micro Optics. Uh, who does the waiver scale replication. Then we have Yoneum, uh, they are connected to the role, to uh, role process of Nanocom. Uh, CCM is also connected to more photonics. We have PTT as integration uh, partner, Fraunhofer as a, a coding partner, and uh, CI Letty, Vilanti mm -hmm. UPT, uh, Power Photonic and Lazea as originators. And then of course, supported by Epic, who is our uh, dissemination partner, and Amiras, who is doing the project management. And so together with all of these partners, uh, we can offer different services uh, uh, in the field of freeform micro optics. So very much focused on freeform micro optics. That means really taking the advantages of freeforms, uh, so optics without any symmetry constraints, but miniaturizing that uh, to a, a small size form factor, which is then giving a lot of new possibilities in many industries. So you see here some of the examples. And one of the reasons why uh, we have uh, uh, done this is because we also see that the market is asking more for it. If you take a look at the amount of uh, patents that are filed or uh, papers that are written that are in including freeform micro optics, 
then you see this exponentially growing. So it's the perfect time for this pilot line and, um, and its capabilities. So to give you a, a small introduction, I want to share uh, with you a short video. Freeform micro optics have the capabilities to revolutionize industries. Imagine automotive lighting that is perfectly aligned with the design of the car, or lighting solutions that provide better energy efficiency, better light distribution, and perfect aesthetics. Imagine all AR and VR capabilities with better resolution, feeling more realistic, yet the device reduced to a size that you don't even realize you are wearing. Or improving your home with luxury and smart windows. That is the power of freeform micro-optics. The ability to create optical shapes in any form you want, completely miniaturized for perfect integration. Opening up new opportunities for security and branding, optical communications, consumer electronics and more. And now imagine that this can be done with equal or even better specifications than conventional systems and at lower costs. This is why Fabulous has opened up the one-stop shop in freeform micro-optics, making this technology now easily accessible to everyone who wants to implement it, proving a full supply chain of world-class freeform micro-optics specialists. We can take you from design to prototyping and into pilot production. For full product life cycle, including design, modeling, origination, tooling, and manufacturing services. Some have already paved the way by integrating freeform micro optics into their product portfolio. Are you ready to take the next step in your product development? Make it fabulous and contact the one stop shop for freeform micro optics at info at fabulous.eu. We are fabulous. So I think this is already a really nice introduction into our capabilities. And um, I think it's also important to explain why we are doing this. So as I mentioned, we have many partners that are offering many parts of the value chain. And this is exactly also why we um, have found it fabulous, because without fabulous, you would need to go to all of these companies individually. And often you need a, a company that can do like the modeling as well help with the design for manufacturing. Uh, then you need an originator, you need a, a tooling company that can make the right tool for replication, you need to, to think about the material selection, quality control, integration. And so the idea behind Fabulous is that you can access all these services through a single entry point. It also means that we operate on the one NDA with all these members and we can offer a single contract even if there are multiple partners involved. So this is a little bit about uh, how um, yeah how we operate as Fabulous. I will explain a little bit more about these different services. So you see them here. All of the services are aimed at a UV imprint replication. Uh, that's also uh, as part of the scope of the project. I mean, we can also uh, do other um, other replication methods, but uh, especially because we are talking about the funding today. Uh, that watch is, that one is very much focused on the UV imprint technology with the partners that uh, I've just mentioned. So Swiss Micro Optics, Morphotonics, and, and Nanocom, they are our replication partners. Then we can do the integration. And then we have some use cases. So those are companies that have started with us inside of the project that were looking to implement freeform micro optics. And uh, uh, we have some of them here also today to explain a little bit uh, about uh, the results there. Um, but to start a little bit with the technology, uh, so as I said, so UV imprint technology, so just for those who are not so familiar, uh, there you typically have a, a substrate, you put uh, on a UV curable resin, you bring that in contact with the stamp, and then you cure it using UV light, you release it, and then you have your imprints. So it says here wave scale because the schematic is coming from our wave scale partner. But the same principle also applies to the roll to place and the roll to roll uh, processes, where you see here also in the schematics a little bit how those kinds of processes work. Um, uh, so, and then, uh, uh, so there are many different uh, um, uh, specifications and requirements based on the type of uh, replication technology you use. So, wafer scale is a, a little lower in volume, but of course uh, has a higher precision. So here are some specifications. I won't take you through all of them. You will see some more, but uh, 
yeah, we have the recording and I'm also very happy to share the slides afterwards. Uh, but this gives you a little bit of an impression on, on, on what is possible using these, uh, these technologies. And then, of course, it starts all with the design. Huh? So, and especially the design for manufacturer be, for manufacturing, because what you see a lot is that companies, uh, yeah, they, they see that uh, there is a need for free form micro optics and that they can use it. Uh, and they start working on it and, uh, you know, they have a first prototype and they think, ah, yeah, oh, you know, then of course, often you need to make some more changes. So it's already prototype four or five before they finally have one that is okay with all specifications. And then it turns out that it cannot be manufactured in volume. So this is one of the things that we focus on very much already inside of the design phase. And we've developed also within Fabulous special tools that can help identify um, problems in the design or problems, things in the design that could cause uh, uh, problems when you take it to large volume production. Uh, so uh, uh, very sharp edges. So we have uh, a tool that can um, uh, be used for the edge smoothening. We can identify the minimal feature size. We can visualize shrinkage, which will happen during the curing process. So we can already take that into account when we do the designs. Uh, we can see some visualization of constraints. Uh, we have also this um, point cloud ray tracing, so we can actually match also um, a, a, a master or a replica to the original design and, and compare it. So all of these tools are meant to make sure that we uh, design it right from uh, the first phase, of course. Uh, and, you know, sometimes uh, you still need some iterations, but it's definitely helping to make sure that uh, we uh, we do it right from, from the start and we take already into account when we do the design, what is needed to take it to volume production. Then we have also a large uh, a range of origination technologies. Huh? So we have uh, multiple designated uh, origination partners. We also have other partners that have some origination capabilities inside. So all of these are available within Fabulous. So these are some laser-based uh, origination technologies. So laser micro-machining, laser ablation, uh, grayscale laser lithography and two photon absorption. But we also have silicon etching, diamond turning and diamond drooling. So quite some capabilities that we have also from the origination sites uh, available in Fabulous. And again, so I will not take you through all the specs, but if you're interested, uh, you can pause the video later on this slide or I can share it with you. Uh, so feel free to take a look and if there are any questions, of course, uh, I am here also to uh, support. Um, so this is a little bit what we can do from the origination, of course, when you go to the replication, uh, especially also uh, where you need uh, the larger tools, you need to kind of create a, a bigger master. Huh? So this is what we often try to do using a step and repeat process. So it's using the same principle of a UV curing by copying uh, the, um, the master to a larger scale. So we take uh, the smaller master and then we imprint it and then we place the master to a different location and then uh, repeat it until we have a larger master. And so you can see here already that we did some, um, you know, increasements of the master that can be nearly seamless. And then we can uh, use uh, electroforming to also create these larger tools. So you see here, uh, yeah, some of the the larger tools that have been created uh, uh, within the fabulous uh, partners. So I also you see here in the center this big drum where uh, you know the pattern was um, distributed there completely. It was for one of the use cases. So this is a little bit what we can do on the uh, on the tooling side. So uh, of course, then uh, we go into the uh, uh, replication process, but we need also to select the right material. So this can also be different from application to application. So here are some of the information that we have currently available. Uh, it's nice to know that we have also, the partners can also tweak their materials so they can actually look together with customers to develop some special um, resins. And then also we have external partners that can help us um, have make the right material selection for a specific application. So again, I won't take you through all the details, but if you are interested, you can take a look at it later. And then, of course, uh, after uh, the replication, sometimes there are coatings needed. So we can, for instance, add anti-reflective coatings. Uh, and then we do, of course, the performance evaluation. Uh, so we do the quality control. You use here the same, uh, what I explained before in the design, this, this 
uh, ray tracing uh, that we can use to uh, to evaluate the performance. And then we have partners also that can do specific functional testing. Uh, so we have here an example uh, of one of the partners that can do that according to automotive regulations. So quite some capabilities also on the on the quality control side. And uh, yeah, with this, uh, we have all these different services that we can offer. Uh, as mentioned, uh, we validated that also with the use cases. So we have been working with uh, uh, Zoom Topol for solid state lighting, with Seisenbacher for transportation lighting, uh, with Hella for the automotive lighting, and then um, uh, Micro OLED for the micro displays and Swarovski for the luxury. So these are also, the last two are also um, here represented today to explain a little bit more about uh, what uh, they've done here but it can be used in a wide range of markets. So you see here uh, some examples. So AR, VR, lighting, security, and branding, uh, also for any, any optical elements uh, or the, that you would need on uh, security documents or things like that uh, in optical communication, in consumer electronics. So quite a few markets where uh, free for micro optics can play a role. And so today we will hear, uh, as I mentioned, from Micro OLED. So we have uh, Zavé Bonjour, who can tell us a little bit more about what we've done in the Micro OLED use case. Um, we have uh, Raphael here from Swarovski that will explain a little bit also what we've done on uh, the luxury site and the applications. Then we have Harold from Swiss Micro Optics. So he's the automotive expert. So he will explain a little bit about what uh, is possible using free for micro optics in automotive. Uh, Roger from CSCM will join, who will explain a little bit about uh, optical communication. Um, and then we have Vanessa from Fraunhofer IZM, uh, I think on the uh, integrated photonics and, and, and how it can be used there. So this is a little bit the program. And then after that, uh, hopefully everyone is inspired on what can be done using freeform micro optics. And then I will come back to explain a little bit more about the funding capabilities uh, that we have. Uh, so, but with this, uh, so uh, I'm running the front office uh, together with Ton, uh, so you can contact me or him directly, follow us. Uh, and with that, I also want to thank all the partners in the Fabulous Project, Optech BB for hosting this, and of course, Photonics 21 uh, for the, uh, and the European Commission for the funding. And uh, with that, I think it's good to start hearing a little bit more about uh, the applications. So with that, I say for now, thank you, and I will come back to you later. Thank you, Jessica. Before we go to the next speaker, I just want to clarify because I think this could be of great interest to the audience here. Are you telling me that uh, Fabulous has design tools so that if I want to get into the field of micro optics and learn how this can enhance my products, that you provide these tools so that I can explore, even well, if I'm not so really sure what to do? Uh, at the moment, the idea is more that we can, um, you know, take a look at the design that has been made and kind of give feedback on on what uh, possible things need to be considered when they want to go for a final design. So it's more of a verification tool at the moment being used internally in Fabulous. Uh, but I do see a large potential also for Fabulous in the future to give some trainings on those kinds of things in general. So to really offer some trainings to, you know, help optical designers what to take into account when they are designing free for micro optics. Uh, um, yeah, for for uh, something that wants to be used in in volume production. So this is definitely coming. Uh, we are discussing that. It's not available now, but for sure, if you have a design, we can, I mean, we can make a design also. Eh? So if you think that freeform micro optics could be a solution, but you don't have the designers in house to work on that. So you are not an optical company, but just you have the feeling based on maybe some of the publications that uh, it could be a solution. Then you can also apply initially for, for instance, a design. And eh? so you can get, get in contact with Fabulous and, and I'll tell them, okay, I have this product, but I would like it to function as this. Can free for micro optics help? And if we think it can, then you can also apply for a design and then we can make a design for you. Wow, that's really exciting. So there really is zero barrier to entry to the wonderful world of micro optics and what this can do. Absolutely. Thank you. So who's next on our on our list? Uh, you Michael. Just showed. Yes, Michael. he's oh, already yes, sharing his screen. Perfect. Beautiful. This will be exciting. Oh, 
<laughs> okay, so yeah, thank you for having us on uh, on this uh, webinar. Um, so I'm Xavier Bonjour, and uh, uh, I work for um, MicroLED. Uh, MicroLED, uh, we like to think we are the the second biggest supplier in the world of uh, uh, OLED micro displays. Um, and uh, I think today I want to to share with you. Uh, um what we do for uh, smart glasses our view and the market on on of smart glasses and also how we want to use the micro optics uh, mm -hmm. this uh, in this use case uh and and maybe if i have time i can explain what we do uh into detail with a, a technology we call active look but we can skip that uh, okay so the first um i think the first uh message is that if, when you look at the augmented reality market it's not just one market uh, the way we see it it's uh it's a segmented and uh we we like to segment it in three uh, three buckets uh, one uh, which we call uh, advanced augmented reality that's uh you know uh, typically where you can synchronize uh, digital content with the uh, the external world uh and typically you need quite a lot of computing power to do that. Uh, in a nutshell, I would uh, consider that as a, like a, a, a PlayStation or a game, a, a, a gaming PC in, in, into glasses. That's the kind of uh, uh, CPU power you need to, to achieve that. Um, then we have uh, what we, we think, we, we call that basic augmented reality here. It's more about uh, providing basic uh, smartphones like capabilities into glasses uh, and typically that would be doing uh, uh, video conferencing uh, uh, it's basically a, a smartphone uh, trying to fit a smartphone into glasses and uh, duplicating the, uh, the, the the feature and then uh, we like to think there is a, a third uh, segment which is a nascent segment uh, for at the moment which we call light augmented reality and here, the name of the game is to be able to provide a some augmented reality feature into a, a normal glasses form factor and weight. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of players uh, here today. We, we, we are part of this uh, uh, segment, but we can also consider that uh, um, SLL Exotica, Meta, and with their Ray-Ban story is part of this segment. Um, the the rules of engagement in this segment it's it's all about the weight and i will explain why it's all about the autonomy and power consumption and it's also uh, about uh design because we believe this is very much uh related to a fashion business uh so let me explain why the the weight is so important for this segment uh well, when you look at the, the, the normal glasses market, you see that the normal weight or the average weight of glasses, it's about 26 grams. And there is a reason for that. It's, uh, it's because you, it's difficult for people to, to wear uh, the whole day comfortably more than 30 gram-ish uh, on uh, the nose. And, uh, and uh, also there are studies that show that in terms of comfort, there is a limit which seems to be like 40 gram. Anything which is beyond 40 gram, uh, it's not going to be well accepted by uh, by the end user. So weight is uh, is it's very important. You need to be able to to meet this weight uh, constraint if you want to be successful in this market, and that's proven to be a big difficulty for many players. Uh, then weight is only part of the equation. Actually, when you mean weight. Uh, the the <laughs> the issue behind weight is power consumption because uh, when you look at the the power consumption uh, mm -hmm. it's basically the battery size and not only uh, the the battery size but also the cover of the battery the the penalty of the battery is not only that you have weight on the battery but you need to hide the battery so you the penalty uh, you you pay twice um, and yeah. Physics being physics, it's uh, uh, it's rather brutal uh, today with the current technology and for a foreseeable future. Uh, if you want to achieve, uh, uh, you know, this something below the forty gram limits, you need to have very low power consumption in the glasses, and that puts pretty heavy constraints on the design of the glasses. So, 
some of the constraints, because of course, uh, yeah, you need to provide decent autonomy uh, in the glasses. And um, yeah, we think it's about like for smartwatches, it's about 10, 12, 18 hours uh, can be, uh, it's debatable, but uh, more than eight hours, definitely. So that means the whole system needs to, the power consumption of the whole system needs to be about 10 to 20 milliwatts, which is very, very little. And this has implication in terms of um, system design. Uh, first of all, uh, it's better to leverage external uh, memory, battery and computing resources uh, than putting them in the, in the glasses. So that's why we believe that uh, smart glasses for foreseeable future is going to be a connected device to a more powerful device. Then uh, you need to be very careful on the, on the CPU. There are only so much you can do with uh, 10 milliwatts of CPU. So again, uh, this will uh, provide limitation in terms of design and processing capabilities. Uh, because the glasses need to be connected and light, uh, they need to be wirelessly connected. And uh, we all know that uh, radio traffic is uh, it's huge power consumption in any uh, wearable device. So you need to be very careful about the power consumption there as well. And of course, uh, last but not least, uh, the, the display needs to be you know, uh, very low power because the minimum you can use for CPU, it's about five to 10 milliwatts, uh, then that means you need maximum 10 milliwatts for, for the display. So, uh, yeah, uh, we believe that uh, because we, uh, I mean, as a micro display manufacturer, we pay attention to the power consumption. That's the, the whole story between what, uh, behind what we do is we provide very high brightness and very low power micro displays to fulfill this demand for uh, smart glasses. And down that many technologies uh, which can at least today, uh, today uh, deliver this uh, very low power uh, uh, feature. Uh, now I want to explain how we, we want to use, or we could use because it's not uh, decided yet, uh, how we, we can use uh, micro optics to improve the, um, the characteristics of our display. Um, I think in the end, what matters in the micro displays in the, the type of application uh, for light augmented reality, it's how much light you can get uh, out to the pupil uh, for every electron, so every amps you, you use uh, out of a battery. So we need one way to, to do it. Of course, you need to optimize the architecture, optimize the electronics, but you need to maximize these the light out light outputs. Outputs. Uh, uh, There is an echo, somebody, uh, yeah, no, it's gone. Uh, you need to maximize the, the light output uh, of the, the, the micro display. And the way we look at it, we can, by using this um, micro optics uh, structure, we can maximize, we can extract more light out of our pixels. And uh, so I, I won't go too much into detail because we, we don't want to describe, you know, go into detail uh, what we've done, but uh, we use the, we've used the, 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 the fabulous uh, pilot line to, to be able to to do a micro optical uh, micro optic structure uh, based on lenses, uh, small lenses, which is going to extract about thirty percent more light uh, out of our pixel. So that really improved the efficiency of, of of the display, and the benefit of that is because we need to pay attention to uh, to color. Uh, it has little or virtually no uh, impact on the on the image on the light emission spectrum. So we uh, we are pretty happy with the um, with this test, and uh, uh, we have to see how we 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 put that into uh, uh, into our product roadmap. Uh, okay, so uh, just maybe a few words on what we do, and more specifically the the, the technology platform we uh, we make available to to the industry and to the consumer world. Um, this platform is, is called Active Look. Uh, yeah. It's basically uh, a connected display embedded in, in glasses. So it's a head up display, which is connected by Bluetooth. Uh, it's uh, very light, very large autonomy. It has an, an open API. So anybody can uh, 
provided that the, the device speaks Bluetooth low energy, can actually uh, feed the display, whether it's, it's, a, it's a smartwatch or smartphone or, or computer. Uh, and we see, we've, we see many use cases actually. Uh, the first one is sports, and we are addressing directly the, the consumer market with sports application. Uh, we do have uh, interesting uh, businesses developing in the military and uh, the first responder activities. Basically, anybody who is uh, in operation and which needs uh, uh, mission critical information, and of course uh, the industry, uh, the industry sector. Okay, I guess uh, I'm not sure, but maybe there is time for uh, questions. Um, well, sure. uh, Xavier, I'd like to, uh, so what I understand from this is that there's, two, there's weight. If we look at weight as a singular design and engineering consideration, that gives us guidance for everything else. Do I understand that correctly? Yeah, because uh, we put the weights, uh, the limiting factor for, for uh, like, and that's why the, the, the big guys are, are struggling with the, these are smart AR glasses and that they keep on being pushed away. It's because it's very difficult to, uh, the, to provide autonomy, uh, light and uh, weight. Uh, the equation, it's, it's very difficult. So you, you and we, we think the, the biggest lever, it's the power consumption. If you can manage the power consumption, you can meet the, the weight budget. If not, you, you know, you're out of the chart very quickly. Okay, and then also you were mentioning something of great interest, and that's saying that you're using the micro optics in order to extract more light, which directly correlates to the power yep. consumption feature, right? Yeah, because absolutely. In the end, uh, like um, what we call light augmented reality, uh, it's an electronic issue, but it's also an optic uh, issue. And the biggest issue is probably in the optics. It's how much uh, light you can bring to the pupil out of the display. And that's an optic, uh, uh, an optical problem. It's not a. It's got nothing to do with electronics. The Moolah is not going to help. Uh, but you know, it's you need to be uh, to uh, you need to work on the optics. So micro optics provides a solution for this. So we're not walking around with those crazy holo lenses. I've tried to walk around with one of those. <laughs> oh my god! Indeed, and and yeah, it's. Uh, now I think these Hololens, uh, there, there is a there are use cases, but it is different. I mean, if you look, if you ask the special forces of, uh, if they prefer to use, uh, you know, the Hololens or uh, light augmented reality displays, they all vote for the the light, uh, because being when you are in the operation, when you are in motion, when you are when you move, basically, you just. It, not only you cannot have the weight, but your cognitive load cannot absorb so much data. So we think the the augmented reality is going to split into two several sub segments. Uh, one which will be augmented reality, like as it's been being advertised, the metaverse thing. But most of the use case, I mean, many use cases will be for something much more simple, which is. Uh, contextual information uh, in the head of display. So you mentioned absorbing data out of curiosity and, and Jessica, please keep track of the time so we don't ask too many questions, but I'm really curious about the absorbing data. And you also mentioned that you have design tools. Are you able to provide guidance for those that are new to this in order to- uh, not, design tool, not uh, that's something, Yeah, uh, the design tool. I'm not sure how it's been designed uh, or this. I mean, we do have our own design tools uh, uh, because we are. We also have a, an optical engineering team uh, in, within the company. We do have our own tool. I'm not sure to which, to which extent uh, which tool we use for this very specific application. So I don't know. But you're experts. And so if someone interfaces with Fabulous, they're able to tap into your expertise. Do I understand that correctly? Uh, I think the answer is yes to that. Yeah, so Mike, I think it would be good to move on because I know that uh, Rafael uh, has to leave at four at the latest. So I definitely want to give him the time also to uh, give his presentation. But if you have any more questions or if anyone has any questions that they put in the chat, I think, uh, Xavier, maybe you can then uh, reply to that a little bit uh, after. Uh... 
after Rafael did his uh, his talk. Thank you. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> thanks a lot. I, I hope you can hear me. So, okay, I will jump in directly. As Jessica already mentioned, I'm a bit in a hurry today, unfortunately, <laughs> as a workshop colleague as well. Um, but anyway, um, um, my name is Rafael, Rafael Michalczuk. I'm, I'm representing another use case today of the Fabulous Pilot Line. Um, it's a Swarovski use case, and I will start this way, um, explaining you a little bit uh, why we are actually involved in the project. Yeah. So in, um, in our project, it's all about micro optics revolution for decorative surfaces. And um, yeah, you might ask really the question why a Julian manufacturer is involved in an optics, micro optics and free from micro optics project. Yes, this is maybe not that obvious. And um, what I did is I, I took one slide or one picture of the optic BB actually, um, re a quite recent presentation, I think where something like an, um, let's say a simulated festival of lights in, in, in Berlin is, is shown there. Yeah? Um, at least it reminds me of that one because I lived for some time in Berlin and that always was quite, quite a nice event um, during the time. And um, just switching to the next slide, which is already coming now from Austria here in Wattens from our headquarter, um, you see there's quite a, a common line yeah, in, this, in these two pictures. So we have this nice, <laughs> nice colors, <laughs> a color effect on the one hand side and on the other hand side here in Austria. So um, basically you see here our interest uh, that is really um, about turning light into delight how we call it and this is since um, 1895 since the company was founded so um, the really the one of the basic basic topics in our company is, in, is using also light um, for yeah, doing amazing um, brilliant and sparkling um, um, yeah, really effects and, and phenomena in the end. And um, what you see here are pictures from the uh, from our kind of own museum, you can say, in the headquarter. Um, it's the so-called Crystal World, Kristallwelten. Yeah, so for the German speakers in Berlin, Brandenburg area, <laughs> probably this is speaking as well. So um, this is what you can actually visit and where we exhibit a little bit um, how we play around with crystals and light. Yeah. So um, having seen in this one, I think it's much easier for you to get the idea behind and why we are dealing with such topics. Um, yeah, going more into deep uh, um, when it comes to Fabulous. Um, on the left hand side, you see actually a product uh, from our company. It's the so called active panel. Um, this one combines about 200,000 um, crystals um, that, uh, that are then illuminated by a backlight of special LEDs. Um, and um, as you easily see, it's really a decorative lighting solution. Um, which is on the other hand, um, a very, a very um, heavy, yeah, <laughs> due to the crystal components. And um, actually during the development of this product, um, it was already requested um, in the development phase that, yeah, um, that there should be probably some some further um, some further development in the direction to make it more lightweight, and we we have seen um, an option in the free for micro optics there to maybe um, really tackle it from a different angle um, by using using really. Um, optics and in this case then specifically decorative foils um, to achieve maybe similar uh, similar results um, and we call this like uh, foils or panels um, that have a gemstone appearance yeah so they are not actually gemstones anymore but they have a gemstone appearance um, um, another product is on the other hand side on the right side this is this hexagon panel um, this is actually also um, kind of a yeah, honeycomb design that is installed as a kind of an artwork, an art piece um, outside in an outside area. Um, what is now Fabulous offering um, to us and what have we done? So um, we took a kind of a, 
a typical way for fabulous yeah <laughs> so we we've made it through the whole the um the whole the life cycle yeah so actually um, what you what you need to know about fabulous is that um, jessica and her um, very very experienced colleagues yeah, take you um by by your hand and then guide you through the whole process yeah starting from the design um and the design um actually um, this was very much driven also by our by our competences from in-house um but we we tracked back with the fabulous experts there to um to have really um a, a producible design um uh, which is which is important and then uh, we we moved into the next step um of origination and here you see a, a really tiny i think it was a 20 by 20 um uh, quartz master um that has been then as jessica explained before stepped and repeated there yeah, on, a, on a larger surface um to get then imprinted um yeah on a larger area and um this process of really um bringing it to a larger area is then that actually this step into the repeat process for the replication and on the one right hand side you even see that all this can bring us to such a huge drum yeah? um, very very large um, and um, with really nice results when it comes to um, also seamless alignment of the of the structures which is important for many many use cases and ours as well um, yeah and um following this path then to um building up um this structure with nano imprint lithography um in different um yeah actually in different processes so in roll to plate process and uh, on, on glass substrates but also on foils um in roll to roll um we ended then up with these nice demonstrators on um, on the left hand side you see one um, i believe this is the glass uh, the glass version um imprinted in the middle we have the the foil version um so you have really decorative and um, decorative structures per square meter and um in the um on the right um you see the um illuminated version with backlight um leds behind the structure um with, with yeah without coating actually so the difference between the middle one and the right one is actually also that you have no um yeah no coating no silver mirror in the end uh, and here, just for impression, a little bit uh, a short video uh, showing that this this structure is really uh, sparkling, is crazy. It's very difficult to show this in the video, um, but if you um, if you see this in real life, um, it's almost disturbing. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 sparkling so, so much um, that um, yeah, basically all all this. Um, regular irregularities uh, that are achieved here um, you really do not know where to look at yeah? um, but this is by purpose yeah? and um, i think it's really well achieved in the uh, in the fabulous project and you get here uh, really a nice nice impression um, how this how this looks like and yeah you see another version um one of the um foils imprinted uh, and then with them with the decorative um yeah, print on top of that um showcasing the fabulous project itself well um that's all from my side very quick <laughs> but we have time if you have any questions yes sir. um and yeah if if you want to reach out to learn more about this use case um please feel free I don't see any questions yet, but are, so this really blows my mind. So Stavorsky Crystal, you mean this is a totally creative application. Yes. And you're telling me that Fabulous is able to take a company like Stavorsky, which we would not think about in the technology realm, and was able to walk you through this? Yeah, that's that's true. So the guys, the guys are amazing. Yeah, um, even with such such, such exotic, uh, you know, <laughs> exotic use cases, they are able to deal with. So um, yeah, very 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 nice, very nice competence there. So it, it shows basically from my perspective that um, they can handle almost every use case, right? As far as it is applicable to free from microptis, obviously, right? So we have a question from Trili Kwong, um, and he's uh, who's thanking you for the in interesting results. 
For the glass example, is microstructure created directly on the glass surface? Um, actually, they, they, they have also a, um, it's, it's also a lake on top, let's say, right, where, where, where the input is, is going on, yeah. Adrian. Uh, yes, um, I would just have a question on the opposite array. Now you try to make it as sparkling as possible. Um, maybe on the other um, uh, end of, of this list of these possibilities, is it possible to make glare free, completely glare free luminaires with this uh, idea of micro optics? It's almost a question. I would need to redirect to the <laughs> to the paperless experts, but um, yeah, basically we are we are obviously on the on the. Um, on the sparking and diffractive side, yeah, and we are very untypical <laughs> with that. So yeah, let's say it's a, or, or, yeah, or, or at least from the use cases that we experienced here, yeah, this was very untypical, um, and, and no one wanted to, to achieve this. But the other one, uh, on the other end, everyone was really looking for, um, let's say, very precise, very precise structures and effects, right? So mm -hmm. um, this is definitely in scope of Fabulous, I would see. And um, the free for micro optics is basically um, yeah, going this direction, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's, that's, that's clear. Okay, then a second question in just this direction. Um, the maximum or the size of the little sheet we, sh we, we saw on the video, what is the actual size of this? And what is possible? The yeah, the, the small one. What we have seen, I think it was, um, I think it was really, it was tw twelve by twenty centimeters or something like that, more or less. Mm -hmm. um, but this was done by purpose because we we wanted to have something close to an A4 um, format, <laughs> to some reasons. Um, but actually, what we have seen on the drum is 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 is, is much bigger, yeah? and there we there we pushed it, I think, to the limits. Yeah, so it was um, I cannot recall now, but it was really one one eighty or something, right? In 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 in, in, in the in the broadest part, um, and this required a lot of um, yes, the step and repeat issues. And on the other hand, um, then also this nice alignment of the sim uh, the seamless alignment really of the structures, yeah, which is really a crazy thing. <laughs> You need to do it mm -hmm. <laughs> very yeah. precisely. Um, yeah, and they, they achieved it really, really nicely. Yeah, and um, actually, we even explored different ways how to do it. Yeah, because we originated. Um, yeah, maybe I'm going too far, but we originated in different ways. <laughs> so okay. let's, let's say we had a me mechanical, uh, a mechanical approach, yeah, which is um, mm -hmm. which you can imagine probably. And on the other hand side, we we used also the laser, um, the laser approach. And yeah? so mm -hmm. we even we even tested and explored um, two pathways, um, and in the end, um, both of them had um, pros and cons yeah <laughs> so we ended up really with, a, with, with really with a nice evaluation that, that that told us okay you can go either one way or the other and always you will you will face some challenges and benefits yeah mm -hmm. so that is that is the truth yeah okay jessica do we have time for one more sorry to interrupt Adrian. we have a question in the chat do we have time for a quick one jessica yeah i think it's t t talking about the timing right is it right yeah start to finish from jim field Yes. Yeah, start to finish. So if I'm not mistaken, it took us um, two years in the end. Yeah, as a project, I think, as, I think, I think it started um, in, in, in 2021, right? Um, and um, the use case more or less finished end of, of last year. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your question, Jim. Uh, Jessica, how are we doing on time and are we ready for next? Uh, yes, uh, uh, for me, we are ready uh, for the next one, uh, fine from my side. So uh, I see Harold uh, is already here. So if you're ready, Harold, then uh, you can share your screen. And uh, Raphael, uh, thank you so much for being here and good luck with your <laughs> other presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks to all. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you, Jessica. Hello, everybody. Um, I try to share the screen here. Okay, can you see it? Yeah, perfect. Perfect, okay. <clears throat> so uh, we are now talking about free from op micro optics in automotive. Um, and I would like to uh, give you a little bit of an overview of uh, the agenda, very, very short. 
uh, Huawei, what's the technology, why Freeform, and um, then a little bit of Outlook. So Huawei, it's just one slide. Uh, we are in uh, at the beautiful lake of uh, Neuchâtel in Switzerland here, uh, doing refractive as well as diffractive microoptics. Um, we are part of this Swiss Microtech group. Um, we have uh, uh, vast production facilities, clean room more than uh, 1,100 square meters, annual turnover, 30 million output per year, 40,000 uh, wafers, a lot of products, a lot of different products and uh, small and bigger customers and uh, around 150, I believe it's more employees. Okay, moving on. So technology, um, uh, maybe this is... Uh, to remind you uh, what uh, micro-optics is about. It's uh, making the optical element smaller, which results in a different ratio between uh, the imaging side and the optical size side. And that results in a much bigger uh, depth of field uh, with respect to macro-optics, where you are always limited. We have to uh, always adjust your focus to be uh, to receive sharp images or to project uh, sharp images. Micro optics is so small, it's uh, the C2 value here is of the size of a few millimeters uh, that you are virtually very soon um, in uh, infinity. And, uh, uh, and as you can see, the micro optical system is also much smaller. So both uh, two advantages, much smaller optical system while having a much bigger uh, depth of field. Now, uh, one micro optic is not enough. Uh, at, at the very end, you want to project a lot of light. Uh, so you need many of them. Uh, ideally, you arrange uh, that, those in an array uh, of uh, identical or non-identical um, projectors. Uh, you have a typical arrangement, an LED a collimator, and then the, the many um, micro projectors in front of it. Um, on the right, uh, you see an example of how that looks like. Typical sizes are 10 by 10 millimeters. Manufacturing, uh, Jessica has already thankfully talked about that. So uh, there are essentially two ways. Uh, this is by uh, uh, reactive iron etching. So you do lithography, uh, you uh, develop that uh, resist, uh, and then you start etching, and uh, then you de define. Um, uh, lenses typically a spherical lenses. You can do other things as well, but your let's say your um, your uh, uh, feature window, uh, the the products, the shapes you can obtain are more limited uh, than what key what, that what can be done via imprint, which is the second technology. I don't go into into detail in this. Uh, Jessica has talked about that already. Uh, so here you need. Uh, a master that is done by uh, uh, diverse methods, but obviously that master can have uh, very different features and can be uh, also very uh, non-uniform um, so that you can obtain different shapes at different locations, uh, which would correspond to the picture right on the, on the lower right side, where you can see uh, an indication of having different lenses. You can also do stacking. You can have uh, the, the dark blue stuff in the middle that those are metal masks. So you can put masks at different locations and achieve different uh, effects. This is what the classical application looks like. Uh, it's a floor projection. So you have this uh, micro lens array, 10 by 10 millimeters, and you use it to project the pattern on the road. As you can imagine, you can have uh, uh, variable uh, shapes um, uh, in the individual projectors, variable mask shapes. So you can kind of uniformize, homogenize the, uh, the light distribution so that you get more light in the remote parts and less uh, light in the uh, near parts, which is obviously resulting in a relatively low efficiency for such an optical system. Uh, these are some examples uh, of uh, production models and, uh, and show cars also. Um, and what is coming up next is uh, here, uh, people have noticed that you can use those projections to uh, increase safety, uh, to 
kind of paint visual marks on the screen on the on the road surface so that uh, other participants can detect those much easier and are warned uh, um, regarding the future uh, uh, driving um, direction of the vehicle. We will get to that a little bit later. Uh, you can also use it for interior projections, but this is just to, for the sake of completeness and the, the, the projection surface does not need to be flat, uh, obviously. Um, you can correct this with the, uh, the deformation of the lens shape, but this is just for the sake of completeness. So the advantages of micro optics and automotive is miniaturization of the optical system. Uh, sharpness, high depth of field, high efficiency. I was speaking of low efficiency, but we will get to that later. Functionality, you can have very uh, diverse uh, light distributions. Uh, you can do pretty much anything you, you like within certain limits. Uh, and you get a lot of freedom of design because you have a, a modular construction, less weight, uh, and uh, maybe a room for more functions or for other functions. Freeform, why freeform now? Freeform is in automotive, a technology that's known since the late 80s. Here you see a headlamp of a car that was one of the first freeform uh, headlamps. What is freeform about it? It's the reflector. So it's no longer a parabolic or spherical or ellipsoidal reflector, it's freeform. And therefore you don't need any other features to guide the light. This is all you need to guide the light before you had these uh, uh, glasses on, on the left um, uh, where the features were needed to uh, distribute the light properly. Uh, now, where could freeform micro optics, freeform, freeform micro lens arrays come in? Uh, we, I mentioned that before, uh, regulation uh, is considering uh, such distinctive elements uh, to be projected on the road, which can be semi-dynamic, uh, which will be very specific, only certain patterns will be allowed, and uh, which are much brighter than the uh, floor projections that you could see before. So you need to be much more careful what you do with the light, what you do with the input light, and uh, there uh, freeform optics can help to, to already tailor light distribution into the uh, micro lens array to get more light out. So there's a big opportunity for freeform micro optics to get much more efficient uh, in this uh, area of application. By the way, this is already very old, uh, but I, in the interest of time, I will, I will uh, not go into detail here. A patent document in the 30s already describing some directional lighting uh, that, that shows the driver where the car will drive. So you know whether you will hit an obstacle or not. Headlights, uh, we have already two um, production headlights uh, on the street, uh, Lucid Air and Genesis G90, which is not on sale in, in Europe, as far as I know. And uh, if you look at the construction of uh, one of these headlamps, uh, you see that it's a very compact uh, optical module. Uh, typical uh, lens size here is like uh, 15 millimeters. Um, uh, the multi-lens array that's featured here is uh, somewhere 20 or 15 by 40 millimeters. Uh, so you don't need really macroscopic bulky uh, objects and objectives and, or projection lenses um, to project the pattern. Rather, uh, the pattern is produced by more than 2000 individual micro optical projectors. And uh, since you can define uh, each uh, mask uh, in each projector differently, uh, you have uh, significant uh, freedom to uh, generate uh, different patterns or to match your patterns uh, as you like uh, in combination with uh, different, um, uh, uh, differently driving the, uh, the light sources themselves. Quick word on the efficiency. I, I think I have to, to come towards the end. So uh, this is the efficiency after collimation. It's uh, roughly 70%. 
uh, for a single uh, or a triple uh, lead arrangement behind the collimator lens. If we go further, and, and this is where freeform optics uh, can also help the, the, the light field uh, that hits the mask is pre-shaped so that the mask is only cutting a very little light off uh, and you maintain uh, most of the light distribution through the mask, through the projection system on the road. And after mask, uh, the uh, light uh, distribution looks like this. And this is also what you get when you project on the road. So um, actually low beam, this is a typical uh, European low beam distribution can be pretty efficient using micro LED uh, arrays. Um, and uh, these efficiencies of 47 respectively 40 percent are, are very much in line with what you see uh, using other optical methods, uh, even even uh, even higher. So what what do we have to expect in the future? Uh, I already mentioned road projections for safety. So these are some of the patterns that are under discussion. Uh, this can can be static, but this can also be, uh, semi-dynamic, so you could kind of uh, think of these chevrons appearing one after the other. Uh, but all of this can be done uh, very nicely with micro-optics. And uh, uh, if uh, those micro-optic uh, lenses are freeform lenses, uh, uh, then uh, this will help uh, the uh, clarity of the pattern, the efficiency, the brightness of the pattern, and therefore help improving the safety on the road. What's more, another trend is uh, ultra slim headlights. Uh, you see that more and more on the street. Right now, uh, most often these slim uh, features are represented by the daytime running lamp, but in the future, this could also be done by uh, full headlamps uh, realized with micro optical elements, very shallow, very thin uh, headlamp signatures. Uh, and that is actually what car manufacturers prefer. They want to have a daytime and a nighttime appearance that is uh, identical to, uh, to enable better brand recognition of their, their cars. So freeform micro optics can enable never before possible styling options. And with this, I conclude um, uh, what and why freeform micro optics in automotive you can increase uh, design flexibility, you enable novel functions such as the uh, safety uh, road projections, higher efficacy, higher uh, optical efficiency solutions, and with that uh, higher value and ultimately never before possible styling options. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jessica, how much time do we have for questions? I mean, uh, we just shrink down the last presentations, but uh, uh, so if there are any questions, uh, feel free. Let's say, uh, I don't know officially what time we had for Roger. I'm happy he's here already, but we can definitely answer uh, two, three more questions uh, if needed before he starts. I mean, Torkus has a quick, has a long question, but I have a very quick one for Harold. Have yes. there been any discussions for having these type of optical safety systems as a requirement for autonomous vehicles? Uh, yes, absolutely. So um, uh, obviously an autonomous vehicle needs to communicate somehow uh, to uh, a human or, or even uh, animal uh, traffic participants. Uh, so this is under heavy discussion. Uh, what, what needs to be done? What is clear for everybody, for all cultures? What would work worldwide? Uh, and and that may include uh, road projections as well. It's mostly signatures on the on the front or on the back or on the side of the car, but it can include road projections as well. Okay, do you use any tool to predict the shrinkage in each UV cured lens? I think that's also a general question to Fabulous. I didn't get that acoustically, sorry. Um, let's sorry, any tool, do you use yeah. any tool to predict the shrinkage in each UV here? Ah, yes, yes, yes. So the, that has uh, obviously to be taken into account uh, um, to, to pre, uh, to forecast the, the shrinkage uh, uh, across the multiple uh, replication cycles um, from master to submaster to, uh, the, to the final tool. 
uh, and then that is that is part of our know-how that we do routinely and uh, uh, well sometimes you hit the first time sometimes maybe you need a small correction so let's see um we those are some other lengthy questions we can address later but we have another question from jim field is the chrome mask used to eliminate optical crosstalk between the lenses Yes, it may be used uh, to eliminate the optical crosstalk, but mostly it's used really to, to create uh, the very hard uh, cutoff that you need in a low beam. Um, that is the, the most important function uh, because legally you have to um, uh, really limit what, what uh, the amount of light that you can have above the cutoff line. So you need this, you have this very sharp light distribution uh, and there's an upper limit for what you can have above. And there's also obviously limits for what you can have below, but the, the very high contrast is required. Thank you very much. Uh, Tarkas, I believe we could address your questions in the chat because we do have a schedule to keep. Thank you, Jessica, for letting us entertain these questions. Yes, and of okay. course, uh, at the end of the meeting, uh, if we still have huddled here, we can answer any additional questions as well. But uh, yeah, we should be uh, moving forward with the program now. Uh, thank you. So I guess with that, uh, Roger, feel free to start sharing your screen and uh, take us to the world in optical communication and the use of micro optics there. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, I hope you can see my, my, my screen. And then, uh, yes, uh, I will uh, uh, talk about uh, this freeform similar as uh, the talk before, freeform micro optics. But uh, I will go to the use case of optical communication. I think there it's, it's less of a, uh, making an image or making something on the road. Uh, it's more about uh, making a, a low losses, having no no losses, uh, and ease of uh, kind of uh, fabrication and packaging. So I will do that uh, in really talking about uh, the wafer scale in plane micro optical interconnects that we did for um, the fiber arrays. Okay, um, after the short introductions into optical packaging, uh, I will explain our idea, the concept, the uh, design. We'll talk a little bit about fabrication. Uh, we'll show how we did characterize our devices, show the results, how uh, we ease really fiber assembling, uh, and uh, I will finalize with some outlook, uh, some possible application of our device, and uh, a short summary. Good. Uh, everybody knows, I think one of the most challenging steps in optoelectronics industry remains uh, uh, the photonic packaging, uh, especially if you have uh, fiber, if you have uh, multiple fibers and not just one. So normally what you end up is, is also we have uh, quite bulky devices. Uh, assembly process are often quite complicated. It uh, requires alignment normally even in three up to six uh, degrees of freedom. So it, it, it really ends up with uh, quite a high fabrication cost. So how are we tackle this? Uh, uh, we are going to use uh, micro optical elements, uh, which are very compact, which can be uh, directly integrated onto, uh, onto wafers. Uh, we do the Optic interconnection is kind of in plane, so we don't stick out. So it really, really stays in plane. Uh, and we will include this kind of comb-like structure so to ease uh, really uh, fiber alignment. So that really makes a uh, plug and play passive alignment possible and will reduce uh, the costs uh, massively. Okay, then to the idea, the concept of our, pro, uh, our um, <clears throat> device. It's basically uh, of uh, uh, on uh, it's it's two parts. One is the reflecting surface. Uh, it, it kind of here and uh, on front here and side view, which uh, redirects the light that comes from the fiber uh, to our optical device. 
could be a photo diag or some uh, a grating just uh, lying on, on our wafer, as well as these fiber walls called here, which will align the fiber precisely to our device. So, and, and this uh, orange parts, that's our kind of free form optical device, uh, nicely uh, seen here. Of course, we would like to be this device uh, compatible with all kind of standard fibers that we have, this kind of single mode, multi mode, covering uh, the whole optical communication wavelength range. Uh, and what we also can do, of course, by properly designing our uh, uh, reflecting surface, to direct the angle, how we are going to, uh, uh, in which angle we are going to redirect the light to the wafer. That's especially important if you have grating couplers, which needs certain angle to be most efficient to couple uh, light into the, the wave guides. How are we fabricating it? We have already seen a little bit before uh, the process from Swiss. It's, it's, it's very similar. Uh, in a, It's kind of a three uh, steps. So first we need a master, master that more or less has the shape of our reflecting surface. Uh, we do that with a, a photolithography process for photoresist. Uh, we just illuminate uh, through a mask uh, and ending up with some cylindric shapes. Then we go to a reflow oven so that we have nicely spherical shaping, uh, more or less lens type uh, uh, structures. Of course, if you want to have uh, other forms, then you could, uh, instead of spherical, you could have a uh, direct laser writing to make these masters, uh, as there are other originators in Fabulous actually involved. You can do anything. If you have this master, <coughs> out of it, we are going to do a stamp. So it's quite similar. We're going to use a mask, kind of chromium. You will see the mask, uh, what, what the purpose of it. Have some uh, UV curable material uh, in between. And by demolding, we end up uh, with a stamp. Uh, and this stamp, this stamp then is now used for mass manufacturing because uh, uh, we can just do the UV replication on several wafers. Uh, if you treat the stamp well, so again, you put on some UV curable glass-like material, uh, align your stamp to the wafer with your structures that you had in mind, illuminate again and uh, harden it. Uh, the illumination points, you demold and develop all what's not hardened and you will end up with the structures that uh, you can nicely see in these ACM pictures. Uh, it's quite a big one with big alignment fiber walls on the side, fiber inside already put inside. The reflecting surface here uh, in the front we do have process uh, given some residual layer. And in the, this is actually one that was put on a, a, a peak uh, with uh, integrated uh, waveguides. We did also uh, <clears throat> realize these structures on uh, glass wafers. Um, the, uh, here with the top mask I was talking before, you can have any shape from the top. So instead of just having the square, you can have some uh, funnel-like structure so that will ease then the fiber inserting of in the structures. Or you can even have some uh, uh, additional ones that uh, for stress relief to uh, that the fiber is really not being stressed inside here and even going to break away. So then it, 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 it's quite uh, good, quite flexible with this kind of structures. Uh, here's a little bit smaller one than the one before, so we can uh, really implement uh, bigger or smaller structures. Uh, then we did characterize the whole uh, devices uh, here on a glass uh, sample. So what we did, we have an input fiber, a single mode fiber and an output fiber on a 90 degree angle. 
and uh, by measuring the losses that goes through it and is re redirected to the multi-mode fiber, we were seeing that uh, we reached quite nice losses. Uh, so it's in the tens of the dB range. Uh, and uh, by doing some kind of uh, Y and uh, X uh, sweeps at different set differences of, of this uh, output fiber, we were proven that uh, the beam quality was quite nice because it really follows exactly more or less the theoretical expanding of the beam. And we were able to see how on the which angle our um, uh, surface redirects the light. Uh, using the, the X direction. Uh, here is an, we put uh, our structures on um, uh, grating uh, waveguides uh, with input and output, uh, and which has some kind of an S shape so that uh, you don't measure straight uh, uh, light that is just going straight. And um, here we had a little bit more losses. It was in the range of, of 10 dB, uh, but that was due to, uh, we had this question before about the shrinkage. We took into account that the shrinkage in uh, in vertical direction, uh, but uh, we kind of had uh, the, the shrinkage also in a horizontal direction that we have. Uh, we, that we kind of did not took correctly into account. So that's, these structures are not well aligned because of the of the of the difference in in horizontal. So that's uh, one one cause of the losses. But we think that we can go to much lower losses. Here you can see uh, on the on the left side the introduction of a single lane, a single fiber. Uh, it really works quite easily. It's a little bit more complicated if you have a 12 array because to handle 12 fiber uh, fiber ribbon, it, it's a little bit more difficult, but you can see here it's kind of partly inserted into this uh, array and then pushed forward. Still, it, it, it is quite, uh, it, it's good possible to do. We realized in a demonstrator so we had uh, 12 fibers inside, glued them, uh, had a ribbon cable with the connector on the other side. And when you put the white light into the connector, then you can see the light coming out uh, under this more or less 90 degree in the back of the, of the glass plus the glass piece. Good, with that, I already come to the kind of the outlook. Uh, and uh, application field, uh, one, it's, it's quite obvious. If you have a, a single uh, a uh, photodetector or a, a Vixel, uh, then you can use this kind of structures. If you have an array, uh, it's even more, the, pro the, the benefit is even, even higher because then you can uh, have uh, fiber ribbons uh, as it is shown here. But uh, you can also uh, interconnect uh, silicon nitride, uh, photonic integrated chips. So you can make uh, connectivity to chips, uh, array connectivity. Uh, you could also think of a backplane connector. So you have two boards that with an additional lens could uh, ease alignment tolerances because you have a broad, uh, broad beam here and have a board to board interconnectivity. But also uh, there you can have, think of a kind of a, uh, connectivity to waveguides in optical board, which is uh, quite recent, quite, uh, quite interesting and uh, kind of a, a very promising field. Or of course then, going directly chip to chip into connect uh, as it is shown here. So this technology uh, can really have a lot of application in uh, the communication. Okay, to summarize, uh, we presented an innovative compacting plane optical interconnect. Uh, it is fabricated in uh, the promising cheap uh, UV imprint technology. We showed the uh, losses uh, in a quite uh, low range. Um, this structure can also be implemented with uh, alignment features to ease the packaging. 
uh, also again uh, reducing the cost of uh, fiber packaging and uh, we demonstrated some first devices uh, for coupling uh, light into uh, silicon nitride life guides so with this uh, we really think this micro optical interconnect can be implemented uh, for industrial volume production and it will facilitate integration package of electro optical components. And uh, with that, I come to the end and thank you. Jessica, this was pretty amazing, I'd have to say, Roger. So this is one of the keys for uh, mass volume production of silicon nitride, this a heterogeneous integration step. Do I understand that correctly? Uh, we hope so, yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if it if it's really going to hit that, uh, it's it's still is, is some way to um, get the tolerances uh, down and the losses down. Adrian, you had a quick question, I believe. Um, up to now, I'm so impressed. No, um, it looks simple, but at the end, it's not. It's not. <laughs> this is a precision of of micrometers and. Yes. But on the other way, um, for for uh, photonic integrated circuits, it's it's a key component. Uh, you start with a fiber and you end with a fiber, and everything mm -hmm. in between. Okay, it's magic, but uh, <laughs> the fiber is a connection to the real world. And so, uh, thank you very much for this. And uh, um, also with very funny ideas of quantum communication and and uh, and and mixing and uh, four wave mixing and something like this you always need a fiber and you have to connect it mm -hmm. so thank you and up to now no question just many ideas in mind i will take it to my members and uh, they will come to you with with um stupid and funny ideas uh, to be solved uh, just uh, we're waiting for it yes just Go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so maybe also a good moment to highlight that this is exactly why uh, I, I wanted Roger to talk here, because this is one of the things uh, that we want to address today, right? The open call that we have, the funding that we have, uh, it will enable companies to, to, to work on these kinds of projects. And uh, I mean, uh, I will explain a little bit more about uh, the funding uh, uh, in, in a later presentation. But it's exactly uh, these kinds of applications that we would love to see uh, coming forward uh, in an open call and uh, and see us working on executing those kinds of applications uh, together with CSEM amongst others. So mm -hmm. yes. uh, they have a lot of knowledge. Uh, they are, uh, uh, as an RTO, they have a lot of knowledge on, on a lot of things. And I I'm really think this is a, one of the cool ones that we can support a fabulous to take to volume production. <laughs> so I... Uh, I, I challenge every company that uh, is looking for a solution to uh, to come forward. <laughs> Thank you. Jessica, I think we're going to see a combination soon. Sorry to interrupt Roger, but I think our next presentation will it will make it evident how these uh, technologies <laughs> work together. Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, Vanessa, I guess that's your cue. <laughs> Is she here? Can you yes, see it, Vanessa's please? Here. Okay, great. Okay, then, um, yeah, let's start with my presentation. Yeah, I'm Vanessa Zamora. I work in front of ICTM, uh, Berlin, Germany. And of course, like you know, we are not really a uh, fabricate microbes. However, uh, our main competence does is photonic packaging of course, and optical interconnection where, of course, we use uh, this, uh, these elements, you know, to perform solutions yeah, for different applications. Um, okay, let's go. Okay, first of all, I just, I would like to give you a overview of our photonic group and ISATM. Yeah, uh, practically we had three different topics. Uh, first topic that is photonic ensembling. Yeah, 
where, for example, we have uh, different technologies, you know, to process glass, uh, thin glass, uh, in order to define customized uh, packaging and interconnections. Yeah, and also. Uh, my the second topic is my topic, you know, that is related to these uh, fiber interconnections and optical sensors. Also, here, of course, we had also different technologies that we can apply and offer, of course, these customized solutions. Yeah, and the main objective in my topic that is, of course, optical sensors that can be uh, biosensors or, or for example, optical gyroscopes and and so on. Yeah, the third topic is related to the uh, electro optical circuit boards. Here we have very nice technology that is ion uh, ion exchange technology to uh, create optical web guys on glass panels yeah where also we can activate the electrical functionality um in these panels in order to also to create uh interconnections um of course uh Typical, um, typical approach that we have in order to get uh, low losses is, for example, to try to, to process the optical fiber. Yeah, for example, here what we we are doing is just to make simulations and to try to define a specific shape in the end of the fiber to uh, to achieve this uh, um, uh, mod uh, matching. You know that we need, for example, when we would like to couple light to a photonic integrated circuit. Yeah. And of course, we had uh, several technologies. We use the standard technology, for example, to use just glue, you know, glue, uh, glue it in the optical interface. But also, we had a nice technology where we can attach directly uh, fibers to uh, a specific chip, class chip. Yeah. And uh, typical uh, um, uh, packaging approach that we have in ICET and is just you know to start with the specifications from a specific application, then we uh, define the design, and after the design we perform uh, we fabricate the pieces that we would like to use to create uh, the small module of system, you know. Uh, commonly, we use glass, but also we can use other uh, other materials. Of course, depend on the application. And for example, here in the um, in this presentation, just I, I had two cases. You know, special cases. Uh, they are photonic chips that they are. Um, uh, for example, the first one on the top is a spectrometer operated in shorter wavelengths. Of course, shorter wavelengths had some issues. Uh, for example, when uh, when we would like, for example, apply the standard uh, glue metal, we cannot do it uh, due to this high density in shorter wavelengths. That is why it's better to have uh, glue-free uh, interconnection in these wavelengths. Also, for the other case, the other case is high power. Yeah. Um, but the most interesting thing I think uh, or technology that we have and is also related to uh, micro optics that is this uh, laser valid technology that we have. Uh, we have a semi-automatic machine uh, that we develop in a research project and in this machine we can attach directly optical, um, optical fibers to a substrate where, for example, we can have um, micro optics, you know, micro optics, for example, to focus uh, the light. And uh, like previously, previously uh, mentioned, this can be used to, for example, to couple uh, bits sources or other kind of um, components, optoelectronic components. And for example, with this approach, we can attach not only one fiber, how you can see it on the on the right picture, we can also attach a array of fibers. Yeah. And and also, for example, we can also use to attach um, to attach fibers to um, optical uh, to uh, web guys. Yeah, for example, web guys can make on a glass substrate. Uh, this is a silicon nitro web guy, like you see a little bit in the in the picture in the in the middle. And practically, also we can use this approach to attach fibers to these webcasts, but also to extend it to microfluidic. 
Other technology that we have in ISETM that is just very interesting also for uh, micro optics is uh, this uh, molten soil uh, process that we have. Uh, first, uh, we use like a like a etching process, you know, to reduce optical fibers. But also in the midtime, uh, we um, we figure out that also we can Samoa? get. Excuse me for Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Yes. And um, we, uh, I just guess I'm the only one not to seeing your slides. Can you share your screen? Okay. So yeah, we have sure. a chance. I wasn't seeing that as well. Sorry, our apologies. Okay. okay. Let now. Let you know earlier. Okay, one second. I think it's a problem here. One second. Let me. Now? Now something happens. Yes. yes now okay. Much see. better. Yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking I was sharing. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, perfect. Um, also, we have this technology. I say that we have it here in ISETM. This is this uh, etching process uh, based on molten salts. Uh, you know, to first we use to reduce optical fibers, but also in the midtime we figure out that uh, we can also use has a polishing approach. Yeah, polishing approach. For example, you see it that um, um, uh, in the picture, uh, in the in the bottom picture, you can see it also that there is a microfluidic channel and that we have processed with a femtosecond laser. And later we I uh, use this molten salt approach and we see it practically that the uh, the surface of the channel is is very smooth, yeah. And also in the moment, uh, our idea is why not to use this uh, post processing uh, process for example for example for uh, micro optics, yeah. That's is an idea that we have. Uh, we didn't test it, but uh, it's something that can be also potential, yeah, um, uh, in relation with the uh, micro lenses, for example. Okay, um, I move uh, forward. Uh, in the next slide, just I wanted to say that recently uh, we have a new equipment and I said then, uh, this is this, uh, this um, a 3D printer where we can, for example, uh, make for different uh, technologies or, or uh, processes. For example, we can make the selective laser uh, induced etching, uh, we can also, building uh, two glasses, uh, bonding, I wanted to say, but also we can directly um, uh, bright uh, web guys, yeah? 3D web guys, optical web guys. And all of these three uh, different uh, processes are made with glass, yeah? But also uh, this machine had a, a power, you know, had a chance to also to process uh, polymer, you know, using this technology uh, to uh, photon polarization, Pol uh, polymerization. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, of course, uh, always uh, we have uh, also optical characterization uh, setups that we use, you know, to 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 prove or to see the functionality of the chips before before they are uh, ensembled. And for example, also recently, uh, we have a automated machine where also we can uh, we can measure array of um, web guys, you know, in, in the chip, and also measure, for example, the transmission, the return loss, and also the mole field diameter of the uh, optical fibers and also web guys. Yeah, here of course we can um, we can use it for chips, uh, typical chips, silicon nitrate, uh, silicon chips, but also for uh, web gas may and panel level. And just like an example, you know, this was a result that we uh, did in a research project. Practically, this is a, a biosensor based on uh, photonic uh, structures, you know, microstructures. But if you see it um, in, the, in the right bottom picture, you see it that we had attached um, fiber arrays directly to, uh, to the chip. 
yeah the chip had these uh, grating uh, structures however our next motivation is to find uh yeah a free form lens solution you know that uh, that uh, can that that we have a chance you know to for example to get a uh, passive alignment and also um, mass production and my last slide just summarized that uh, when we think about uh, the compact uh, photonic systems, of course, there are several technologies that we need to think about it. And one of these technologies is, of course, ensembled, for example, the macro optics in, in, a, in a system. Yeah. And we mentioned it also, uh, for example, the, the quantum application that is quite um, relevant, you know, uh, in the moment. And for example, we had also this, um, this technology, laser valent technology. Um, we see that it's quite potential also for this kind of quantum application where you would like don't want to use uh, glue yeah in the optical interface yeah uh, of course uh, i wanted to say uh thank you very much and just i wanted to give you a overview of our technologies related to micro optics yeah thank you very much Thank you very much, Vanessa. It looks like the, this is a critical component to combine with the other technologies presented for mass manufacturing. Yes. Adrian, you have a question. Um, yeah, just one question to the um, uh, up thinning for, uh, of, of, of fibers. Um, you started with a normal fiber of, of 80 micrometers, go down to 35 micrometers. Um, but I think at the end, um, it's just 50% of, of diameter. Yes, you can uh, came a little bit closer, but at the end, it's interesting to go to the core of a, of a fiber down to um, eight micrometers. Um, possible or not? Uh, that is okay. I wanted to say um, we I show uh, this diameter because that was uh, interest from 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 a partner. I wanted to say, but also uh, we performed some experiments where we reduced the fiber 20. 20 microns and also uh, 10 microns, you know, and practically here we see it that we can achieve, you know, uh, this diameter. However, we need to make a little bit more um, more experiments, you know, to see how stable is the fiber. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it, but it's possible. I wanted to say to reduce the fiber. Okay, thank you. Yeah, other questions from the audience. I think now we wrap this up with the biggest part. How yeah. do you get funding to explore these technologies? And to you, Jessica, because how do we uh, take the ideas that are generated and turn it into reality? Uh, yes, so I would love to say a little bit more about that. Maybe uh, Zamora, you can stop sharing your screen so I can start. Just a second. There we go. All right, great. Yes. Because I also prepared indeed a small presentation on the funding towards the implementation of freeform micro optics. So uh, I, uh, I start again a little bit where I left off the last one, uh, saying that, uh, you know, there are possibilities in a lot of different industries and a lot of if different applications. So we heard about a few today. Uh, but really, uh, uh, there are a lot uh, uh, efficiency of solar panels, uh, daylight. I mean, the, the glareless, the glare free lighting system is a very interesting one. I mean, uh, definitely uh, free from micro optics uh, can reduce uh, glare significantly. I mean, if we can really uh, limit, eliminate it completely, depends also a little bit about the application. But it's another example where free from micro optics is definitely offering uh, uh, some nice solutions. So uh, uh, taking uh, all of that uh, into account, uh, I uh, bring you to our open call. Uh, so we have 3 million, 3 million of funding available to support a minimum of 20 pilot cases or early adopters. Uh, so we've seen, uh, we've had uh, the use cases that have started uh, as part of the project, as project partners. 
And now we have this open call to support an additional 20 other companies that are looking to implement free for micro optical components. Uh, so, and uh, also I want to remind you on, on why. So uh, instead of having to go to all these different companies uh, for these additional services, we have one single entry point. You can use some of these services or all of these services. So any of these services can be funded through the fabulous uh, project. Uh, and so the information can be found on our website, uh, fabulous.eu slash open call, or uh, on the top of the navigation, you can find uh, a sub, uh, um, um, you know, sub navigation that uh, takes you to the different information. You can also just scroll down, but here you can find all the information. And it's quite some funding available. I mean, especially how the European Commission uh, 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 really wants to support the, the smaller startups, the smaller SMEs. Uh, so for those uh, uh, companies, there is up to 90% of funding. So um, yeah, when you are interested and you apply and, and uh, then you will get an offer for the services that you have requested and then, uh, you know, an additional um, uh, funding of 90 up to 90% will be given, which means that for smaller companies, uh, the cash contribution is could only be 10%. So it depends a little bit on the company size, but definitely showing that uh, that that the European Commission is uh, is supporting this effort. Um, then, uh, so as I said, so all of the different services and the individual service, uh, and especially with, I mean, so we close end of the year, and then we will have one more year of additional project, which is just meant to execute the services and work on the sustainability of the entity. Uh, so, but especially if you're still at a lower TRL level now, uh, uh, you could uh, uh, start maybe then already with the modeling uh, and, 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 and some prototypes. So we support all TRL levels. Of course, we do want to have a vision towards volume production. I will come back to that. Uh, but to get an idea of all of these services, I would also recommend taking a look at our download section. We have there a, a project handbook. So that's the pilot line handbook. It actually is um, a document that contains all the different services of all these different partners in one single technical document. Uh, so it's a great first start to take a look at what we can offer, which will then help you also uh, make a proposal for the open call. Uh, so, uh, if you have found the information and you would like to apply, you can take a look here and then the application itself is done through a portal. There's a link, of course, under the open call page or directly at apply.fabulous.eu. And basically you can, uh, once you may, once you register an account, you can download a template and, and we ask for three things. So basically you have to explain to us what you want to do and it has to be something new. Huh? So we're not giving funding to create uh, optics that are already commercially available in the market. We are here to develop something new and work on the competitiveness of European companies. So you would need to show uh, on that uh, site uh, some information also on the impact. Huh? So at least show that it has the potential to go to volume uh, uh, production. Uh, so AR, VR is a perfect example. The volumes are not there yet, but it's one of the markets where we know the volumes will hit. So uh, just so we have an idea. And then the implementation. So uh, a basic description of the work package plans. Uh, so that's basically the input that we can then discuss, uh, 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 but it would be the basis of our final contract. So that's what you need uh, in order to apply. Uh, then, of course, me and Tom, as I explained, uh, uh, we are running Fabulous uh, from the front office. So you can get uh, in contact with us. We can sign an NDA, you can discuss in detail and can also support you preparing the documents. Um, so this is a little bit what is available in Fabulous. Uh, as partner of uh, Photon Hub together with Optech BB, I promise to also explain a little bit about that. So. If you are too late because this call closes the end of the year, or if you need a different technology, yeah, maybe some parts of Fabulous, but not all of them. Yeah, so we focus really on, on freeform micro optics using UV imprint technologies, or you need more than optics, 
Then also Photon Hub is a great place to consider. They are a digital innovation hub. They do a lot of things. But one of the things is also to support uh, also the, the non-photonic companies implementing photonic technologies. And uh, they do that in different fields. So uh, we would fit perfectly in the polymer-based optics, uh, uh, but they offer different kinds of, of, of places where you can get funding. And then um, they offer this also for different TRL levels. So I just showed you a little bit about, uh, you know, up to 90% of funding. Uh, Photon Hub works a little bit differently, so they give more funding on the prototyping, so the visibility studies, it can be up to 75% uh, uh, with a maximum of 100,000. And then, so this can be uh, used uh, also, we've had uh, companies that have done visibility studies and are now coming to Fabulous also to, uh, you know, get the optics. Uh, uh, so this is a possibility also if you do with us now, for instance, the design and then uh, the R call is closed, but you need it for the upscaling, then at least also in Photon Hub, there's a uh, 50% funding available for upscaling and manufacturing uh, um, uh, is with a brokerage service. But it shows that even beyond Fabulous, there's quite some capabilities in Europe to get uh, free for micro optics, uh, um, you know, supported. So uh, I think for now, uh, the fabulous call is very interesting, but uh, yeah, if the scope is wider or you are too late, then I definitely think this is a very nice alternative. More information about Photon Hub in general can be found on their website. Uh, and then if we're talking about funding uh, in general, I think uh, coming back to fabulous, uh, I think another <clears throat> thing that is very interesting is that we also have this micro optics community. So it's called the ecosystem. You can access it through the marketplace tab on the website. This is also a, a, a platform that has been funded by the European Commission as part of the project. And it's open to any company offering any kinds of services in the field of micro optics. So you can see here, uh, so all the red labeled companies are members right now of Fabulous, but you see many other companies that are offering different services in the field of micro optics. This is in the organization registry, but also in the marketplace itself, you can enter any individual services. So really we want to be the single entry point into micro optics in general. So I think this is also something very interesting. It's free of charge because it's uh, because the platform is uh, funded by the uh, by the European Commission. So I would also invite any company active in the field of micro optics to uh, to join the community here. And then, of course, end one more time with the fact that we have this open call that we are ending end of the year and that this is the moment. Uh, you know, to get in touch with us and uh, and apply uh, uh, to use these advantages that we have available now. And I would always uh, like to end with, you know, micro optics is fabulous. So with that, also uh, another last thank you to Optech BB for hosting this webinar. And I, uh, if there are any questions, I uh, I love to hear them and answer them. And if not, then I give the words uh, back to Optech BB for the final words. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, Jessica. So I would encourage anyone who's watching this presentation, you know, reach out to people within this presentation, form a consortium contact and really approach this funding vehicle because we know that Fabulous is incredibly responsive. So Jessica, that's one thing I know is that, fab, you know, it's, uh, if you're new to approaching this type of funding, you have no better place to enter than right here and right now with Fabulous. Um, so before we close, if anyone is available, we would love to take a group photo of the attendees. So if you don't mind doing that, we would love it if you would turn on your video and then we can show, uh, take a group photo because this helps us uh, with future presentations. Also, if there are any feedback on this beyond the presentation, please feel free to contact us at Optech BB. We would like to know if there's anything we can do to improve. And Jessica, thank you for your time. I mean, really, this is a lot of organization to do, especially right after a holiday. And um, so on that note, let's see if we can get a view of everyone here. Let's see, how does that work? That's gallery, okay. And I will give it a few minutes. I thank I thank everyone for joining. And also, Adrian, would you like to have a last word as our managing director? Uh, sounds nice, but but no, Mike, you you do it very very well. Thank you very much uh, to to you. I just spent a lot of time and uh, get a lot of very impressive information about uh, micro optics. Uh, thank you so much, all the speakers and all the organizers. 
Um, yes, I, I just uh, lay back and, and enjoy the show. It was very impressive. Thank you for this. And so I will give it to you, Mike, for the last and uh, amazing words and, and see you, I hope, soon again. Well, thank you very much. And so we'll take a quick snapshot now. Let's see if I can get that to work. New. Uh, okay. And drag. Let's see if that works. Okay. Boom. Thank you so much for allowing me to take a photo. Um, what I would like to add is that really, uh, if you want to do something creative with micro optics, reach out to Fabulous. This is a way you as an SME can take your company to the next level. I mean, could you imagine if you're a little scooter manufacturer and you have a new scooter design and you can have optics that are on the same level as Porsche? I mean, this is how you do it. Um, and also something else to add that I've been learning about transfer printing. And so if you want to know what it's going to take for photonic integrated circuits and it, uh, to go mass market, you know, the interposers, right? The, 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 micro, the micro optics I guess are basically a key to bring take our photonic integrated circuits to mass market, right? Because you have to be able to, as Audrian said very adeptly, right? The chip doesn't enter the real world unless it touches a fiber. And uh, so, on that note, are there any comments from anyone in the uh, uh, here still here? Would anyone like to say anything or ask any questions? Yeah, so maybe there were some unanswered questions that uh, we can still address now. And please... and sorry, the last thing to add is that we will make the recording available and we'll share the link on our LinkedIn uh, to the to the recording if you wish to share. Okay, I guess we don't have any questions. Uh, uh, Jessica, I mean, really, I, I, I just want to personally thank who's still here. Harold, that was eye-opening, okay? I mean, really, just to see how you're working with the micromobility. I mean, with the mobility, and I'm, the other question I'm curious about is I wonder if insurance companies will add a preferential insurance rate when uh, auto manufacturers adopt the safety features that you're, that you're prescribing, that this may drive adoption. Interesting question. I, I would guess this is similar as with all other safety functions uh, like ABS and uh, airbag and so on, uh, or camera or radar or stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm inter and it's kind of a chicken and egg question, right? That maybe what's happened in the United States with the adoption of airbags, it was the General Services Administration that made it a requirement to have airbags for the U.S. auto fleet, government auto fleet. And I wonder if some similar mechanism could take place, perhaps the EU saying that, that these certain uh, lighting technologies must be added, uh, at least for cars in the EU, and that could take off. I mean, I'd love to see this at night. I could imagine how many bikes hit cars with doors open and how many accidents that would prevent. Yes, indeed, yeah, fully agree. Xavier, okay, if you're still here, ask you a question about your micro displays. Oh, he's in a conversation. I think he's in a conversation. <laughs> so I wonder how what it would be like, how you could interface with these micro displays. Like, let's say you, you're working on headsets, right, and would like to get a demo kit or learn how to interface, or would that be something we could approach you for with, uh, Jessica? So, I mean, so we uh, work on the technology uh, either uh, like we are doing with micro OLED to enhance the uh, resolution, but there are any, uh, so we have, uh, of course, as I said, in the role to plate and role to roll, uh, they are also a lot of experience with displays and, uh, you know, uh, adding privacy features and, and uh, even integrating them into different stacks, uh, because of course the, the micro optics uh, foils is just one of uh, the components often. So, Really, any of these things, uh, and we would just love to hear uh, about uh, the ideas that the companies have. So, I mean, you see also uh, uh, head up displays emerging uh, in different uh, fields. So, you know, we are open and, uh, and ready to take on uh, any challenge. So, uh, challenge us. 